Today on Beyond. I want to ask you also, was there any problem in the chest area or the heart area? She was supposed to have simple breast implant surgery, but she didn't make it. Will she make it today to talk to her family from beyond? But first... I was upset. I knew something was wrong. When I got there, I darted straight for the house. My concern was my mother. I was looking for her. I didn't see her. It was very, very overwhelming. Seeing her for that first time when they brought her out, I was at a loss for words. I didn't even know yet what had exactly occurred when I saw her. I just knew that I saw blood and that it wasn't good. Teresa was gunned down by her estranged husband, corrections officer Richard Celia. And he went home. He barricaded himself in a house. The police surrounded the home for eight hours. Right before the gentleman entered the house, the police officers, he turned a gun to himself while facing her photo and he killed himself. And today, from this reading with James, I just, I, I hope for some wholeness again, some closure, some peace of mind to know that she's okay and that she knows that I'm sorry. Using his extraordinary psychic ability to communicate with spirits, he's transformed lives by unlocking mysteries and sharing secrets from the other side. James Van Prague, best-selling author, renowned medium, and your connection to the world beyond. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, I'm James. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, sweetie. I know you want to contact your mom who was murdered and you want to try to get in contact with her, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, the first thing let me tell you as you're sitting here and uh, the camera's coming, I want to tell you, I feel your mother around you and she's been with you all morning, all day. I've got to tell you that. And last night, all right? And is her father in spirit also? Yes. She keeps on saying to me, I'm with my dad here. I met my met dad, grandpa. She's with grandpa. And you knew she was because you said she's going to be with grandpa. Yeah. Okay? Right. Was there a move made, like where she moved to, before this happened, there was a new location she lived in? Yes. Understand that? Yes, Because I she's did. talking about she lived in a different location, and from the moment she moved there, and she feels like she was forced to move there, okay? Yes. She was forced to move there, and somehow she was forced to, okay? I don't know if it was for her own protection. I don't know. Yes, but it was. Was it? Okay. Yes. Because she's talking about, um, I was forced to go there to be protected or something, and it's almost like people were supposed to take care of me and they didn't. Yes. Or, or watch over her or to protect her and they didn't do it. Okay? She keeps on talking about the brother situation. So I'm not sure if she has a brother. She does. That's yeah, what she I'm talking does. about. Because she, she keeps on coming back with a brother thing. David. And yes, it's a brother that she did not speak with. Yes. Uh, understand that? Yes. Because that's what she's on about. Remember before she said the brother thing and okay. she said, no, my brother. Uh -huh. And I didn't speak with him and we were like estranged. He was in prison. Okay. And she didn't speak to him before she died. Yeah. And she wants him to know, David to know, that she came through because she wants you to, to have, pass a message on to him. And the message is um, about, she's talking about being wrong, yeah. being wrong. And she's talking about herself being very impulsive and that she said things that she didn't mean. And she's sorry about saying things that she didn't mean, okay? She's also telling me that David's having trouble with nightmares or sleeping. Yeah. Understand that? Yeah. And she's telling me that he is having these, I'm trying to help him with his nightmares, okay? She said the nightmares also involve water and either he's drowning or he feels like he's gonna be drowning, okay? So when you talk to him about that as a, just validation here, okay? Yes. She's also mentioning something about a music box. Do you yes, have this? I have two. Okay, did one belong to her? They both did. Thank you. Because she's talking about you having her music box and I want to, She's talking about it playing, playing. I'm not sure it played by itself once. She does that. Yes, she does she that. Makes our music boxes go off. In the yes, house. she does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she does. That's her. That's her. And they're the hard ones that you got to twist. Yeah, she does it. And she's talking about going to a car show. Oh. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know about that? Yes. Because she said I was right with you. Uh huh. Okay. She also wants to tell you that she um, is hoping that she was a good enough mom to you. And she's sorry in some ways where she feels that she failed. 
So she has to get that through to tell you that. She needs to tell you that, okay? So she's also telling me that she told you that she was in trouble. Yes, she did. Okay? And she knew it. She knew it ahead of time. Yeah. And she said she warned you, she warned the family. Yeah. And seeing what someone said to her, and it's a man, I'm not sure if it was, who said to her, but you gotta leave, you gotta get out of that situation. I know that there was a ring that you have of hers that didn't fit you. <laughs> was it this one? Or they was it another two. one? They're but there's another loose. one that didn't fit. I know you had to get it um, adjusted, she's talking about. Yes, 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 my former wedding ring. Okay, because you had it adjusted, she's talking yes. about. Okay. Um, I'm telling you, this lady feels larger than life to me, very happy. She does, she does not feel depressed. She does not feel, she's not angry anymore, because I feel like she was. Yes. But, um, she really is so moved that you're here to receive her and to give her the opportunity to talk to you and she's thanking me also. And um, I just gotta say that, I've gotta say that. Um, and I feel as though, and she's talking about her death, kind of she was like a martyr, and she said because of her death, there's either a law that is before the books. Does it make sense? Well, there's a lawsuit. There's a, the lawsuit, yeah, okay, the lawsuit, but there's something gonna be coming of this <clears throat> as far as she's telling me like, um, there's gonna be a new law, there's gonna be some kind of a, I don't know if it's abuse law, whatever it is, spousal yeah. abuse or something, but there's something like this that's going to, it's gonna... Take place because of it? Yes. And do you know about Sacramento? Either going to Sacramento and fighting, do you understand this? Yes. Okay, because you're talking about Sacramento, so that's probably where this would happen, but there's a bill or something before them, and she's included in the bill, right? And I wanna ask you, did you not get all of her things? Yeah, I'm not over Wasn't them. that a big deal? Like it's she said at the time, deal. it was a big deal you didn't get a lot of the things. She's also showed me an aquarium of fish. And I don't know, when you were younger, if you had this aquarium with yes. fish. Yes. But she's talking about that. And she's to remember that. She's just giving a memory so you know it's from her. Okay? I don't know if you have the heart necklace, necklace with a heart on it. I know which one you're talking about. Okay. Just so you know this. And she likes that. There's some connection with her and that. I gave it to her. You gave it to her. Okay. Because she's talking to me about that. All right? And she knows you gave it to her and she has it where she's at. Well, she can, she can materialize these things with her thoughts. They can do that, and this is what she's done, because she's wearing this. It's a gold one with a little, it's gold, and she's wearing it, okay? Um, and she keeps talking about taking care of the family. You take care of the family. Her mother's still alive in the earth, isn't she here? Yes. Because yes. she wants you to take care of her mother. Please look after her mom, and she's, please do that, okay? I want to go north of here. I don't know why, LA, I'm gonna go out of, out of LA. Okay, but it's like northern LA somewhere, okay? Mm -hmm. Going north here. Okay. And I want to take care of mom. She keeps saying, take care of my mom, take care of mom, grandma. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right? I'll leave you with that. It's okay? Yes, thank Good. you. Good. You're very welcome. Thanks, thank sweetie. Thank you so much. Is this a picture? Did you feel that James made a connection here today with oh, your mom? Yes. Where? Where in the reading do you feel like he did? Lorraine answers the question next on Beyond. I just knew that I saw blood and that it wasn't good. In 1999, Richard Celio shot to death his estranged wife, Teresa, before barricading himself in his home during a televised standoff. He later took his own life. Today, Teresa's daughter, Lorraine, came to the show to find out if her mother blames her for not doing enough to save her life. Um, she's also telling me that she told you that she was in trouble. He was constantly stalking her and making threats that if he couldn't have her, nobody could have her. And she began to be really worried. Did your mom ever suspect anything like this could happen? Did she ever talk to you about anything yes. like that? Really? Yes, she did. I think more so the fact that she thought he would hurt himself and not her. Because she wants you to have, pass a message on to him. James said that your mom wanted you to pass a message on to your mom's brother, yeah. that your mom is sorry. Yeah. Did you understand what that was about? Yes, because my uncle and I, we haven't seen each other since he, he was in prison and he had gotten out after the funeral. And I finally went to see him. I thought he was gonna hate me for everything that had gone on and him not being able to be there. But yeah, um, they weren't speaking. It was just due to different differential lifestyles. She's also mentioning something about a music box. It could be complete silence in our home and they would just go off 
in the middle of nowhere, and we, my cousin and I would look at each other and I'd go, it's my mom, I know it's her. I now, felt are they it. malfunctioning maybe? No, no, these are the ones that you have to wind and they're hard to turn and they only play when wound or when the switch was turned and no, they were in very, very good condition. But I think it was her way of letting me know. She also wants to tell you that she um, is hoping that she was a good enough mom to you. It hurt because we had those conversations many times. Really? And like I always told her, I don't, I don't ever fault her for the way she raised me because of her. I am now the woman I am today. Very strong, willed person, very independent. And I know I have her spirit. I am very much like her. Did you feel that James made a connection here today with oh, your mom? Yes. Where? Where in the reading do you feel like he did? My, Especially. My locket. I gave her that locket. I bought her that locket when I was really young and after I had my first daughter and I placed her baby picture in it for my mom. And she carried over that uh, over her heart all the time. And the car shows, the, just that's my fetish. That was my birthday stuff and she, she she was always right there like a best friend would be, no matter how anybody else felt about it. She was just like one of us, a teeny bopper out there. Watching you talk about your mom, I can tell that you're absolutely proud of her and you oh, adore yes. her. And I think any mom would be proud to have you. What is it you were hoping to find here today? What did you hope James would tell you? Just that there would be some justice finally served. Because it's not like I can confront the man who did it. This is now a state and county issue, and I can't look at him and say, "Look what you did! Look what you took from me!" I, I, I want somebody to pay that price for taking away my whole life. And to me, his death wasn't enough. Their daughter died after breast implant surgery. Her family is desperate to reach her and find out if she's all right. Next, on Beyond. We now join James in the audience. I also want to ask someone here. I was uh, meditating, and someone came to me. There's a girl, and she talked about her mother being here in the audience today. And is there someone has a daughter that passed over and they're wearing her bracelet? I give it off and I give it to her. You have it with you, though. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Thank you. That's where I want to go. <laughs> Whoa. Isn't it amazing? That's amazing. She came to me my private time, but that's okay. <laughs> when I was meditating, she came right to me and she said that to me, so I want to come to you. Um, is this your husband? Uh -huh. uh, is your father all passed over and your father's uh -huh. passed over? Uh -huh. Okay, because the two fathers are here as well with her, okay? So she has your father's here as well, okay? There's an initial M with one of them. I'm not sure who the M. Marco. Marco, who's that? That's my brother. That's your brother, and so we're referring passed. to him. He's also passed. Okay, well, he's coming in with your father, okay? Just want to let you know that. I want to ask you also, was there any problem in the chest area, the heart area yes. with her? Was with breathing. Okay, and did they try to do something with her heart also? They tried to revive her. Okay, are you related also? Yes, no, my sister. Sister, would you yeah. mind standing, the whole family? Oh, we're going to have one big family <laughs> gathering here. But um, <clears throat> I feel there were two procedures that went, she went through. She's on about two different types of things. She also tells me there was a reaction to drugs or medication that she had. She was having cosmetic surgery. She was having cosmetic surgery and there was a reaction to the drugs? She had a reaction. Yes. And that's how she passed? Mm -hmm. You know, she's very honorary. Can I put it that way? She's honorary. <laughs> and so nice. And, um, yeah. and she's, because um, the way she's honest, she's like, you know what? And she's so funny because she said, I would do it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we that She would do it all over again, she said. Like she would do it all over, she would do the procedure again. She, you know, she felt that she wanted to do this, you know, to look better. Mm -hmm. And I know you told her not to. She said yeah, you did. told her not to do it because you knew, you knew. I, at some level, you knew it, okay? And um, she wants to thank you for coming here. And she wants to thank you, Dad, for being here as well because you weren't going to come. You didn't want to come or there was a joke made about you not coming here today. It's true. And thought it was stupid or silly or something like this, you understand? <laughs> and she's here to tell you it's not. Now you know it isn't. Is it jo Joseph or Joe? Name Joseph? Who was that? Yeah. Yes. Dad. Isn't that your name? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, good. There you go. <laughs> good. And is there anyone with the name of Scott in the family? <laughs> there was. <laughs> your husband? Her ex husband. Yeah. Okay, he's still around, though. Yeah. 
<laughs> your sister's joking to you about Scott, and she said <laughs> there's still some stuff going on with him, which has not been settled yet. No, it's not final yet. Yes, she said it's not settled yet, and you have to go somewhere to either talk to a lawyer or you've got to go somewhere to deal with it. Okay. I also want to tell you, I don't know if you're around. She's talking about writing or magazines or something. What, uh, you know what? I wrote her a letter last night. Oh, you wrote her a letter last and night. And put it under my pillow. Okay, and you were hoping she'd come through, and that's why you did that. Oh, okay. Maybe it's an acknowledgement for your writing, for writing that letter. Maybe. Okay. She's showing me a picture on a wall of her, and I'm putting something on that picture or on that frame. I have a picture with the rose stuck on it. And there's something in it? It's a picture of the Alicia. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's something on that frame, right? Yes. Joseph, uh -huh. what is it on that? Flowers. Flowers. Okay, and they're dried. Uh -huh. They are. Yes. Because they're on that frame, she uh -huh. sees it. Yes. Uh -huh. I see the stairs go by, too. This tree is next to the stairs. That's yeah. right there with the stairs that she's talking to me about. Tell my dad he is forgetful. He, he's forgetful. <laughs> <laughs> and that someone recently reminded you about that, that you're forgetting things. <laughs> and she said it was her joking with you through someone else, talking about how forgetful you are. Yes. Do you understand this? Yes. Good, because I don't. But she's not just... <laughs> that's what she's talking about, okay? Well. So, but she's with you all the time, and... Um, they all are. So you have your whole family there, and I hope this helps you. So I leave you with that. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. And is there someone has a daughter that passed over and they're wearing a bracelet? Okay, Gloria, let's talk about this bracelet. I see you're holding it. And James talked about a bracelet in the reading that belonged to your daughter. That's true. Now, did you bring this today because you thought it would bring her through? He would have a better connection somehow? Maria, she brought it with her, and she gave it to me before the show. She said, put it on, but it was tight in my wrist, and I said, oh, so I'll hold it. It's beautiful. And um, when he came and said, did you put on your daughter's bracelet? And that's when I said, yeah, I did put on oh the bracelet. Oh, my goodness. What did you, what was we your reaction when you heard that? It was unbelievable. We couldn't believe that we could get through in the reading. We were so excited. I feel there were two procedures that when she went through, she's on about. She did pass away through the during the procedure before it was done. She and had an allergic reaction to the anesthetic. And now, what kind of procedure was she having? Uh, breast implants. Oh, breast implants. Now, did you try to talk her out of it? I did, yeah. You did. But uh, you know, it was months, but she never told me she was going to have it done. And we didn't know until afterwards. She showed me a picture on a wall of her, and I'm putting something on that picture or on that frame. A special it to was us. special, and it was the flowers were from her great from her funeral. They were dried flowers. They're on it. How do you feel about this reading? Mm, it was very refreshing. Refreshing. Very, yeah. It was just like because we know that we're we know that our loved ones are still around us, but to actually have some validation for those things and not That's just great. think that we're losing our mind, you know? It's very it's, comforting. It's very comforting. If you'd like a chance for a reading with James, send a letter to Beyond, P.O. Box 4399, Hollywood, California, 90078. And James, I want to talk about someone earlier in the show who had a message that passed over to give to her brother about being sorry. When they pass into the spirit world, that dimension, there seems to be a change like in consciousness, if you will, and an awareness. And they see the good, the bad, everything they should have done, didn't do. And this is their opportunity to come back and try to ask for forgiveness or I'm sorry, I should have done something better. Yeah, but what about, you know, once you go, you're gone. I mean, why should you care? Because it's almost to right or wrong because you've left this earth and not in a great place, not in a good way. So it's their way of maybe coming back and settling things and making the person's life better now because it wasn't good while they were alive. Hmm. Interesting. Something to think about. Yeah. And all you, too. Something to think about. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye now. <laughs> Sorry, we run all around here in the studio. Um, there's a man, your father's also passed over, yeah. yes? Please, because I want to bring in the man here, too. But there's this Peggy and Margaret who are here also for you. Yeah. So there's a grandmother and a cousin? There's a grandmother and a cousin, yes. Okay. There's a John. My Uncle John, yep. Thank you, because John wants to say hello. Also, yep. just, just acknowledge him, he said. He said, they, <laughs> he said, they thought they would forget about me, but they're not going to forget about me. He won't let them happen, okay? <laughs> and hold on, who sold cosmetics at one time or did some work with the cosmetic industry or perfumes? 
I did Avon once. You did Avon. Thank you. Well, that's... Okay, so it's for your mom. Okay, I okay. thought you meant on the other side. Okay. No, they don't sell cosmetics on the other side. <laughs> I'm not talking about... Okay. <laughs> At least they haven't said that to me yet, but... Mary Kay has passed over, though, so... Okay. Um, <laughs> and it's just uh, validation for you that, that your sister is telling me about you used to sell the cosmetics in the Avon, okay? So just a hello to you.